So now let's see how many different sources I can comp together in Photoshop. So in order to get an image out of here, let's I'm just gonna stay in uh, this IRA render here. So this will be, uh, you know, what we'll use. And just to keep it simple, I'm gonna go over here to our image size. We're gonna say override viewport resolution. And I'm gonna type in 2048 by 2048. Go ahead and zoom this in. Now, I'm not going to know exactly where this is in space, but I should be able to line it up in Photoshop later manually. It's not going to be perfect, but or a very elegant solution, I should say, but it'll be fine. Uh, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to crank up my min samples, my max samples, my max time, just to let it render for even longer. Once I'm happy with this, I'll go ahead and save render. Go ahead and put it in a folder, and I'll name this one iRay. Let's go ahead and hop out of iRay by clicking this icon up here. And we already know our post effects and stuff isn't going to translate to the file export 2D viewport. But if you wanted to export out of here, I would say hit tab, uh, maximize your window. It's going to go past what I'm recording, but you know, maximize my window and I could just screen capture this. In this case, I've already got the iRay render. Don't really need this, so I'll hit tab out of here and then we'll go back to normal size. Now, uh, let's take this into Marmoset. Now we could do all of our texturing in Marmoset just like we did here. Uh, go back to the earlier video on that. Or we could do this. We can go in here to File, Export Textures. It's going to dump these right onto my desktop here. Change a template to Unreal Engine 4 Packed. Go ahead and say Export. Let's hop into Marmoset. And we've already done this in previous videos. So if you want another slightly slower step-by-step, -step, go check those out. Uh, we're going to go in here to our uh, where we put our plugin, which if you want to see how to install the plugin, it's uh, again in an earlier video, but uh, Z Startup, Z Plug 64, ZBrush Compositor Data Files. There's going to be a UV Plane OBJ in here. So we're just going to drag that right into Marmoset. I'm going to go to my main camera here. We're going to change that from perspective to orthographic. And we're going to go in here to transform. We're going to get rid of any rotations, which we already have. It's, there's no rotations on there. Um, just to play it safe, let's make a new material here. and We'll call this one Scarab Comp. Drag that onto my plane. Uh, and in Scarab Comp, we need to start plugging in our maps. Now that's just what we had on our desktop that we exported here. So here they are. Uh, UV Plane, None, Base Color, Normal, and then Occlusion, Roughness, and Metallic all packed into one map. That's going to be Occlusion is Red Channel, Roughness is Blue Channel, Metallic is Green Channel. That'll come in play when we start putting these into Marmoset. So again, uh, our normal map, we'll go ahead and plug in from our export. Our albedo map's gonna, our albedo map's gonna be our base color. And then down here under transparency, let's go ahead and do a cutout. And that'll go ahead and make it transparent because it's gonna be using the alpha map from uh, our albedo it's checked on. Now for our occlusion roughness is metallic. Uh, let's go ahead and start with occlusion and click the down arrow. Say, okay, we want occlusion. The occlusion map is gonna be our occlusion roughness and metallic packed map. Drop that in here, and again, uh, it says occlusion, roughness, metallic. Occlusion is RGB, red channel. Boom, there we go. Now we're using uh, metal roughness, so we can see reflectivity is set to metalness. Uh, Microsoft is set to roughness. If you exported gloss spec, then you would just change those as needed. So roughness here is going to be in our green channel. So we'll switch this over to green. And same map goes into our metalness map, and that's going to be our blue channel. Now he does look a little bit kind of uh, super shiny. Let's go into our roughness map here and let's turn off sRGB for that and the metalless map. There we go. So we can hold down shift and rotate this around. And if we want to, we don't, we, we don't, I'm going to go to the side here. Um, we don't have our displacement map, but we can put that back in. We still have it available to us. We'll say displacement height. And this time we're going to go to our uh, C users, public, public document, ZBrush data, whatever version you're using. Z plugin data, ZBrush compositor data, and then go in here to displacement, drag that right in here. We can uh, crank up that scale to displace it some, some more. Uh, but remember, you probably have to go in here to plane, add some subdivide. So turn on subdivide, add like three or four subdivision levels to it to get a nice displacement. So as we scale this out, uh, we get a nice result. Of course, we need to look straight back down at our object here. So let's go back to our main camera and again, zero out our rotations. I just kind of rotated the side so you can see the displacement map in action. So now we have our HDR lights in here. 
We can go down to our uh, sky plane. We can swap this out. Let's go to presets here. Here's the new library. I'm going to dock it right down at the bottom. Uh, it already takes us to the skies. We can open that up. We can choose maybe a midday mountains waterfall or parking lot. And here's the thing too, is anything that has a cloud above it, you don't have locally. So first you need to double click it to download it, give it a second, and then you can double click it to load it up in your sky. If you want to add a child light in here, you can. You can just click in here to add a child light. You can move it around. It'll pick up different colors. So we'll go here and we're going to choose that skylight here that we just added and then go ahead and crank that up. So now you can see those cast shadows really uh, kind of dialing in there. So let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, library thing here. Let's go ahead and pop that out and then close it. And one thing that we did export to our desktop that I haven't plugged in yet that I forgot about was... Uh, our UV plane uh, emissive. So now uh, we have an emissive map exported out, so I can drop that in. So let's tell my marmoset that we have an emissive. We go down here to emission. We're gonna say it's emissive. That emissive map, we'll go ahead and plug in. We can crank up that intensity. And just like in uh, Substance Painter, we can go in here to our main camera settings. We can go down and we can add some bloom to kind of pick up on some of that emissive. You can go in here and uh, change your tone mapping curves if you want to. You can just run like a little bit of curves, add a little bit of contrast. Here you can even use a preset. Purple drink, portrait, Polaroid. You know, organ, you can just dial in uh, the exposure and the contrast and stuff by manually to get that exact look that you need. Now, when we go to render this out, again, because maybe we want to use this as a comp layer, we can go through here and we can say, go to our render cog down here under images. Let's change this to 2048 by 2048. And in fact, back under main camera, let's do set safe frame so we can see exactly where our, our bug is. And again, we're not going to be able to line this up perfectly uh, but we can match it up in Photoshop if needed. So I'm going to go back to our render here, scroll down under output image, and then just hit render image. Now that threw it out on our desktop because that's where I had uh, this image going. So I'm just going to really quickly throw this into our comp all, comp all folders. We have iRay. Now we have Marmoset. And in fact, let's go nuts. Go ahead and uh, you can save this if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, well, you know what, let's save it. Let's close out of that. So now we're back in ZBrush, and let's switch back to our startup material here. Change back to a white color. Uh, if you have polypaint, you can hold down Shift and turn your polypaint on. I don't have polypaint, so what I'm sending over isn't gonna make too much of a difference, but I can go now, if you have this installed and you have this available, you can also do a render, external render key shot, so let's send this on over to Keyshot. All I have to do now is hit BPR. That's going to open this model in Keyshot. And you know what? It kind of threw it out in the middle of nowhere and it didn't save our camera because we don't have camera turned on. So in this instance, I'm going to turn on perspective, go in here to draw, crank up that focal length so it's essentially an orthographic view. So at least now it knows I have a camera that I'm sending over to Keyshot. So now when I hit BPR, there we go. So let's go ahead and switch out our environment here. Let's say outdoor. Let's go to environment and turn on color, maybe a mid gray. I can hold down sh control and left click to kind of rotate this around. So we're gonna rotate so the main light is over on this side. And you can actually go in here to the HDRI editor. And if you want to, you can like set a highlight. So you can click that button and then click over here on the left or control left mouse click over here on the left. And that'll pin a light in your HDRI image. Of course, you can also add a light in Keyshot, uh, but that's one way you could do this. Let's go ahead and uh, dump that. Let's also go over here. I'm gonna assign one material to this. So underneath material, or underneath scene, I'm gonna go to materials. I'm gonna drag one ZBrush mat onto the entire ZBrush stack here. So I can now go in here. I'm gonna go into the material graph. I'm gonna say texture map legacy, double click that, upgrade to new node. Get rid of this old legacy node just by deleting it. And now if I double click this, I can even say, uh, turn off apply matte cap. 
if I want. So again, hold down Control and left click, and I can move that HDRI around. I can swap out HDRI images. And let's go to our camera here. So we have our ZBrush camera. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that camera so I can always get back to it. Go to my free camera so I can move around. And in fact, uh, Keyshot allows me to use my 3D mouse. So I'll go ahead and pull that out here. So now here's essentially what I'm looking at here. So let's go into add, uh, edit, add geometry, we'll add a plane. Go ahead and move this plane up. I can rotate it around. And I can add a, uh, go into materials here, let's type in area. We can drop an area light right on there. I can change this to watts. Let's dump this down to maybe 60 watts. Let's go ahead and scale this plane up a bit. You know, it'll make this a little bit warmer. If we want to, with this plane selected, we could even turn off visible to camera. So it'll still light the object, uh, it just won't be visible to camera. I can go back to my camera, select my ZBrush camera, and then I can move this light around. So let's go back to our free camera here. I could even change this. So if I go uh, double click in our scene here, that plane, I can change it from area light to spotlight. So now I have a spotlight I can move around. And of course, you can change the fall off, the angle here, whatever you want to do. And of course, the material properties here are easily changed. So if you want to go through here, and you know what, let's take bump out of the advanced, and we can just select uh, another one here. In fact, if you want to go to like plastic, you can, or you can just go in here to materials, go to plastic, just drop whatever material you want on here. And this is very easy. We've been talking a little bit about transparent uh, material rendering and stuff like that. This is actually super easy. In fact, let's go over here to lighting. Uh, if we go over here to product lighting, and then we go in here to say glass, you can drop glass right on here. And just like we talked about in the Marmosite, your refractive index is already set. And if we go over here uh, to our lighting, we turn on jewelry, that'll turn on caustic. So now you can see the caustic uh, paths in here, or, you know, they're showing up in our lighting, bouncing around a lot of stuff. So let's go back to our scene here. We'll go ahead and delete this plane out of our scene. So again, any cool renders you wanna do in here, let's go back to our camera and choose ZBrush camera. Uh, you can do that. Um, if I go back to my free camera, you can see the ground is right where it should be, right on its stomach. But if you did wanna move this up, you can go to our scene here, right click and say, move. I'm just gonna move this down. So the shadow's a little bit closer to the object. And go back to camera and then our ZBrush camera. So now as I hold down shift, or now as I hold down control and left click, I can move that light around. And anytime I wanna do a render, all I need to do is go up in here to render, render, choose what uh, format you want and how big you want it. Uh, the, we've been doing 2048, so let's go ahead and say 2048 by 2048. You can also render out, like, say, a clown pass, an ambient occlusion pass, say render, and it'll start rendering. Now, I don't really need a, a jelly or a kind of a <laughs> glass scarab, so I'm going to go ahead and hit escape out of there. I don't really need that, so I'll just stop. But one thing that might be useful is if I go in here to maybe steel. Here's, like, rusty steel. I can just drop that on my object. Let's go back to area light. And I'm going to go back to scene here. I've already dumped uh, all my objects in here, but I can, when I have scenes selected, I can go through here and select them one by one. And actually, it looks like auto merge might have messed this up a little bit. Let's go back to ZBrush. And before we send this over, click off auto merge and then hit BPR. So now when I click scene, there we go. No big deal. I can go back in here to steel. I'm going to drag everything, uh, rusty steel on everything. And then now that I can select the individual objects, I got the eyeballs here, I'm gonna go back to area, light. And again, you can render multiple composites out of here, uh, change your materials, change your lighting. Uh, you always have your camera to go back to, so you'll be able to um, you know, use this all you want. Now back in ZBrush, you can also do composites. 
Uh, let's go into render. Let's turn off key shot so we can stay in ZBrush. You can switch this out. We can go ahead and put on like a reflected map. Hit BPR. And in this case, it's going to bake out like lighting and shadows. If you don't want to do that, you can literally just go in here to your render menu and turn off shadows and ambient occlusion. Then when you BPR render, you'll just get the nice alias, uh, anti-alias look. Then you go in here to your composite and just dump this out as reflection map. Now we've already talked about how you can render out light passes and shadow passes. Uh, subsurface scattering is the exact same thing. Just make sure you go in here and you know what, let's just do that. We'll tap the light and we'll put it up here in the upper left and then down here, we can turn on we can turn on shadows, ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, change these parameters however you'd like. Go ahead and hit BPR render, and then when it's done rendering, you're gonna have shadow, ambient occlusion, and subsurface scattering that you can export. All you gotta do is click on it, say BPR SSS, BPR shadow, BPR AO, and then again you can comp those right into Photoshop.